Well, welcome to the Van Roekel Family Farm Service YouTube channel. Uh, most of you probably do know me as the Iowan farmer because I, that's where I put out most of my videos. However, I have decided to make this channel right here to kind of showcase things that I support uh, in my little farm service company and then also get into maybe a little bit more technique things that I like to do. Uh, like today, we're going to be installing a compass into this 4230. However, uh, I want to be able to maybe showcase people like simpler things like uh, creating A-B lines, things like that for cu customers that maybe want to have a reference on quick ways to do these things. They can always come here, see these videos, and uh, feel like they can refresh themselves on certain topics that they might be interested in. But today, like I said, we're installing a compass into the 4230 so that we can get ready to spread some fertilizer, possibly on top dressing corn. So today I've been out doing some tissue samples, looking at some crops. We're thinking maybe there's some sulfur deficiency showing up in crops this year. Uh, I'll know more once the tissue samples show up here. Probably tonight I'll probably have them emailed to me. But we ended up hooking up the Mobility 600 cart to the 4230 after we got done doing the side dressing because actually the last time I planted sorghum, uh, I needed to put some nitrogen onto that sorghum so the sorghum would actually produce a head. So this is the rig that we hooked up. This rig right here is on 30 inch centers. It's got a, a narrow front on the 4230 and then it's split out wider on the Mobility 600 cart. Nothing is controlled by Ag Leader on the Mobility cart. It's ground driven still uh, and you just gotta set the gate. Would I like to be able to control that all through the computer? Yes, that would be awesome, but most likely I would just build a completely new cart, not uh, try and outfit that one. Is that good rolling? Yeah? Good cut grass. Gotta like to roll in that stuff. Anyways, I have not installed anything into this 4230 other than a mount. I did put one mount in all there already, and I did make up a wiring harness that I'll show you guys here in a second to be able to move the compass in and out quickly. The compass, I've talked about it earlier on the channel, is the low end model uh, of the Ag Leader lineup. It doesn't have that great kind of control of things, but it's a great thing to be able to move quickly from one tractor to the others to give you a basic mapping ability and it can control a steering system if you want to do that. The wiring harness that I, however, that I'm gonna be showing you guys will not be able to control a, steering, a steering system We'll talk a little bit more that, about that here in a second. But let's get into this. I wanna just show you guys how simple, how easy, and how quickly you can put a system into a tractor like this. So we, before we dive too much into this installation video here today, let's talk about what we are installing. We are going to be installing the compass right here. The compass, the screen's a little bit bigger than your average smartphone. Uh, it's actually pretty nicely compact. That makes it easy to move. It's pretty darn rugged. You'll have mapping here on the screen of the actual display. And then right here on the top, you actually have a light bar. So on these installation videos, I'll list all the part numbers and tools that I use down in the description below. That way, if you guys are happen to look for anything like this, especially because I am an Ag Leader dealer, uh, you can just send me an email. And if you need to order a part or something like that, uh, I can get you guys taken care of if that's something you're interested in. But here's what we're gonna need for cables for this installation today. So right here is our globe cable. This is the globe for the GPS 6000. Uh, that's gonna be going up onto the roof. That's what connects your globe to your display. You need a display cable right here. It's a short little display cable, has uh, the connection for the actual display on the back end, and then one's your power, and then obviously one goes to your globe, just like that. You're going to need a source of power. And now for this, you can get the power multiple ways. Uh, if you're going to want uh, to have like an on-track system, you're going to need to go to the battery with a power cable. Uh, you can order those, then you got power right there. For the compass, what's really pretty nice about the compass is your ability to move it quickly from one place to the other. The compass comes with this power cable that you connect to a cigarette outlighter, or cigarette power port, or I don't know, what do we people even call it? They call them cigarette lighters, but now people maybe just call them power ports, I don't know. Um, pretty nice, except for sometimes in the older tractors, your connections aren't that great in those older tractors, or this, in the case of the 4230, that it doesn't actually work at all. So there's multiple ways that you can actually get power to 
uh, your compass. This one I have actually modified uh, already with another style of power port. I had 12 volts ran up into the cab for my side dressing rig. Had another connection for it, so now I, got, I can supply 12 volts via this. Another good way that someone could supply volts is I call these things the smiley faces right here. Those are in about any newer tractor, so you could just supply splice this into a power cable. Uh, if you don't want to use the cigarette outlet or it doesn't work, you can splice one of those in. Or you could always just put a butt connectors in like these and then just simply actually put it to the power bar that's in also most new uh, tractors. You can get your 12 volts however you're going to want to get your 12 volts but you have to have your 12 volts. So I'm gonna leave those cables over there for right now and I'm gonna jump up here in the cab and show you guys what I've done so far off camera to keep things rolling. So here in the cab, this is just a mount that was on this tractor whenever we bought it. I think it actually had a mirror on there at one point in time until it broke. Uh, I think these are inch ram ball mounts. I'll also put these in the description. Uh, the compass uses these inch ram ball mounts. It's a really good idea to just have one of these stuck in the tractor or whatever tractor or UTVs or anything like that that you're going to be moving a compass from one area to the other. The Integras and the in commands they use a two inch ram ball mount so they actually don't fit on that. So in some of our tractors or a couple of our tractors I have a one inch ram ball mount and a two inch ram ball mount depending on which display is going to be end up in the cab. And then obviously you need your power source for this one. This one's already ran. It runs my uh, sprayer specialties little dial control here, plugs in. I just made it so that there's my 12 volt power source. Most of you farmers are pretty handy. You can find your 12 volts any way you really want to. So the next thing we have to do here is actually put a magnetic plate, which actually it's not magnetic. It's just a plate up here on the cab so we can mount the glow. You can make these at home. They're just, just make some uh, plate, cut it out. You can paint it black so it looks pretty and then stick some 3M tape on the back end of it. The difference between making and buying it, if you guys can see this, this has little tabs right here that actually go into the bottom of the globe and kind of lock it into, into place. The globe is held on by magnets. Don't worry about that. I've taken them through some pretty rough areas and I've never had a globe move at all. So to install these, you find the middle of your cab, you take out the good old, it's got a little couple of screws in there, take out the good old wet wipe that they supply you with, take the middle of the cab, wet wipe it down really good, Whew. There we go. Pull your 3M tape. Put her center. Helps if you close one eye. You can call that pro tip. Push her down. And there we go. Just like that, we've got the globe installed. We do have to put the cable on it though here in a second. Okay, so now we've moved into the cab. I've brought all my cables with me here. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually hang the compass here on the ram ball mount, and then we'll hook up some cables and supply some power. The last thing we will do is actually run the globe cable up to the roof of the cab. So kind of a make life easier on you tip, uh, you can always just connect the cable to the actual display when the display isn't actually hung up there makes it a little bit easier that way you don't have to cringe yourself to reach around to the back to spin them on spins on nice and easily there's an arrow on the top there that you line up with the top slot connects super simple super quick bit stick the rambo mount on one side of the mount here uh, just pinch it open ram ball slides in there swivels around then you can open it up a little bit further here um, and you slide it on there as well and then you can adjust it and stick the uh, compass or whatever display you're using at this point in time uh, wherever you really want it to be but there we go it's hanging up in the air now tighten it down so it's nice and firm 
not going to flop all over the place too badly and uh, you're in good shape right there and i know we're talking about the ease of moving around things here when you move things from one place to the other most of the time your wires are going to be exposed uh, for me i like to hide all the wires so most of the time in tractors that get like displays and things in them frequently uh, i will have a power cable already hidden tucking and installed in there really neatly along with the display cable and the globe cable will be run up nicely through one pillar side that way you barely even can tell that they're there you'll actually have to look uh, it's nice it's clean you don't have any wires all over the cab something that i suggest in vehicles that you know are going to have displays in them often uh, or even have them in ones that aren't going to have them very often that way you can move quickly from one to the other But if for this instance when you're just going to have it in here for a day or two And then it might end up in another tractor a little ways down the line uh, Leave the cable ties on them that way your cables are somewhat neat in here even though they will be exposed So then we take our power supply to our display Which is this just another simple connection right here uh, you can't really connect these wrong. Boom, now we have power to our display. Uh, you can see that we are gaining a good bit of cable here of extra. What I'll do is I'll just wind all this up and zip tie it to a cross member here. That way it's nice and neatly tucked up in there. The last thing that we're gonna do is run up here back to the cab, click the uh, display cable or the globe cable into the back of the globe, run it down here through the back window, uh, or possibly I might just run it out through this window right here up and over and Then we'll be pretty much ready to back up back this thing out We'll take it out into the field get it set up with you guys and show you kind of how this thing would run But we aren't applying any product today Secured in there nice and easy And that's that, back into the cab. Okay, so now we bring the cable in through the window here. Uh, we can then close down the window. The window seal will just pinch the cable. It will seal up. Be careful not to break your window while you do this. Uh, just take it kind of easy. It'll seal up and pinch with the window seal. You get plenty of cable. Then we have a connection that we have to make here. Uh, this is a nice tight connection. Put it together, spin these little screw style deals. Uh, they connect together, they screw into their corresponding spot, slots there, and that actually makes a mechanical physical connection so that it won't vibrate apart on you while you're going along the road or through the field. So then here, like I said, we have all of our cables all done up here. What I'm gonna do is just simply coil them up like you would a extension cable. Just coil them into a circle, nice and neatly, or as neatly as you can. That one's already still got a cable tie on it, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna put a cable tie with these together here. And it's not even a cable, it's an actual cable tie. They come with the cables that you order. They're pretty handy, keep those around. And there we go, there's cable tied there. It's not that clean. If I wanted to slide this down, I could clean this up. Uh, but this is just a temporary deal. It works good. But that's installed. Let's fire this thing up, take it in the field behind the shop here, and uh, get things programmed and ready to go. So as we're driving to the back here, I'll hit the power up button located on the back of the display, just so I can boot up while we get towards the back of the field. So now that we're actually back here in the back of the field, we've got guidance here. We're just going to click on the wrench, hide from the ground 14 feet. We're not quite that high this time. We're, we'll say that we're actually at about 11 feet up off the ground, be my guess. Um, that's okay. Distance from antenna, implement location, distance from antenna area. So the antenna is the globe, the globe is there. Without getting out and actually measuring, 20 feet is pretty darn good. We do not, we're not offset from the center line at all. So here's our implement width. 
Uh, for this, uh, that means how wide of a, a swath you're going to be making. So how wide? So if you got like a 20 foot disc, you didn't put 20 feet there. Um, so what we're going to be actually, this is supposedly spreads at 50 feet, but I'm going to go a little bit lighter than that. I'm going to say 48 just to give us a little bit of a buffer. There's no implement switch on this to mark when it turns on, turns off. Uh, and that's all we actually have to do to set up for steering. So now we can select new event. The new event will be created. Say so you say continue. Here's how you're gonna choose what you want. If you're wanting to drive in a straight line, you choose straight. We are not gonna be going in a straight line, so we're going to use smart path. I will make a video talking about those at some point in time here. So implement width is 48 feet. My guidance width is going to be 48 feet as well. Now, here's the difference is I could put my implement width at 50 feet, which it supposedly spreads, and then my guidance width at 48 feet if you were wanting to do a little bit of overlap. We're not gonna be doing any overlap. I just am a little scared about it actually throwing the full 50 feet. So there we go. Now we're ready to start driving around and applying to start mapping. There's this little icon down here in the corner. We click it and it will turn green. And now wherever we drive, it will drive. And then after we start to turn back around, it will come up with a pattern for us. If you guys watch this, you'll see this light bar up here dance around. Kind of tells you light bar wise where you're at as long and as well right here, it will give you a correction error heading. And it will map where you've been. Oh gosh, that's not good. Get out of here, wasp. You're not welcome. Did it leave? Leave! Leave! I'm gonna kill you if you don't leave. Three, two, one. Goodbye. Oh, I broke my glasses. So continuing on, let's take it for a spin. So we'll start mapping here. We'll go for a little drive along through this hay field. It's mapping green. That's when you be uh, applying your fertilizer in this instance here. We'll go along. covers the installation of this compass here it's a simple compass install uh, it's a simple way to actually get mapping so you can in this instance apply your fertilizer more evenly uh, not over apply not under apply save money be efficient uh, and give yourself a little bit of peace of mind hopefully you guys enjoyed this little demonstration of the actual installation and use of this compass you guys have any questions send me an email at the email listed down here below uh, like i said earlier all the parts that i used in this video are listed in the description below you can send me an email order any of those or click on the link if they are have a link next to them and you can purchase them that way thank you guys subscribe we'll be putting up more videos like this throughout the year when things come about see you guys later